I will be talking about uh, legal framework that uh, um, regulates the uh, open science, well, actually open access <coughs> in the <coughs> in the European Union. Um, I chose four different legal documents that I want to uh, talk about. The Horizon 2020 um, regulation and also some additional uh, guidelines that accompany the regulation. The EC uh, recommendations on open access to uh, scientific information. Uh, and also two other uh, documents which are not that directly associated with open access or maybe not uh, immediately come to mind. That is the uh, PSI directive, the Public Sector Information Directive, and the uh, the whole copyright framework of the European Union. And uh, uh, in an attempt to make it uh, more attractive than just a presentation and legal discussion, and also to differentiate a bit of from from what I said yesterday, because some of you uh, listened to my yesterday's presentation, I will try to be a bit more critical. Uh, and I will try to use all these documents and, and legal regulations um, to show what what is lacking, what I personally would like to find there, what is not there, uh, what is not yet there. And um, I will start from the most uh, important things, to, to at, at least to my understanding, um, what is actually not there or not easily um, uh, to, to be found in <coughs> the EU documents is that despite the support and recommendation and requirement of open access, the EU actually does not define what they do mean by open access, at least not in the binding text of the uh, Horizon 2020 regulation, for example, but rather they try to put it in some guidelines and or uh, the accompanying material. And it says there that open access can be defined as the practice of providing online access to scientific information that is free of charge. And if you know this distinction between gratis and liber uh, open access, which uh, actually somehow relates to the free software movement uh, discussion about the difference between free beer and uh, free uh, as in freedom, uh, Open access gratis means only that you don't have to pay, but it only, uh, but it also means that you have to uh, abide to a wide range of limitations and restrictions that follow from copyright law. Because open access gratis is just means that it's for free, but it's not uh, to be freely used because copyright law applies uh, 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 despite you are not. Justin Bieber, but a uh, researcher. Um, and if you go for the liber uh, version of open access, you not only ha not have to pay, but you have uh, you, you got the whole bunch of reuse rights. And the Commission is not mandating it. The Commission is not requiring that. They just encourage. And the Horizon 2020 will not, will not, despite the open access mandate, which is which is there, will not require the liberal. Uh, and it might be we've heard in the morning that the liberal going for lib is overreaching, but um, here with the Horizon 2020 we wouldn't be overreaching because it it would be the Commission who gets gives the money and requires uh, the liberal, so they could. Have the they, they they have the they would have the power to really um, reach that uh, that goal, which is not which is not the case. Instead, they decided to leave the details to the grant uh, agreements, uh, and the grant agreements would regulate what exactly the open access means and what exactly the particular project. Uh, has to satisfy to put something into uh, open access. But when you look into the model grant agreement, which is very available on the Horizon 2020 uh, webpage, it's, so, it's not very specific about the definition of open access and about how to exactly satisfy it. So what I would like to find uh, there is a clear and uh, explicit mandate of LIBER whenever there is public the EU money uh, involved. <coughs> the 
exact legal definition. We lawyers tend to like to have legal definitions of everything, the binding definition. So I'd, li I'd like to find a binding definition in the, uh, the co commission documents. And um, uh, obviously, uh, since we are open access to publications, it is something like a standard already. Uh, I would like to, uh, well, I strongly look forward to, to knowing what are the results of the open data pilot, which is within the Horizon 2020. But I would like to have some more explicit and more um, uh, definite mandate for the open uh, for the data, not just for the uh, publications. Uh, similar remarks go to the earlier Commission recommendation on access to scientific information, where the Commission only recommended and asked member states to introduce policies, open access policies towards publications and uh, and data. And the Commission, well, it's not that its recommendation does not have any, have any effect, because now the Commission is asking member states what are their <coughs> uh, open access policies, but recommendation also for a lawyer does not mean much, because there is no obligation to, uh, to follow the uh, recommendation, and we lawyers tend to think that if there is no legal obligation, you just don't have to care too much. Um, okay, and <coughs> to keep the uh, to 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 um, keep within the time, uh, I will just switch to the uh, public sector information uh, regulation. Uh, the, the 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 public sector directive. Uh, sorry, uh, which it doesn't come into mind when you think about open access, but uh, there are two reasons why you should think about uh, it in the context of open access. First of all, the directive was revised uh, not so long ago, and now it covers, in particular, university libraries. Actually, it covers them only if they want to be uh, covered, only if the library makes documents available for reuse, but if the library decides they have to follow certain obligations which are not very, <coughs> very, excuse me, very uh, um, demanding, but uh, uh, for example, the, the data the, and the, uh, the archives have to be put in uh, open formats and the uh, reuse, different types of reuse cannot be discriminated. Uh, but also what might be seen as a step backward, step back, is that the PSI directive requires that you put transparent calculation of fees, while when we talk about open access, we always stress that it's uh, without any fees, that it's for, uh, for free. Which means that if the PSI directive now covers libraries, uh, it might be serve as an excuse for implementing some open access um, policies or uh, in, the, in the meaning of, uh, of gratis. Uh, and the last uh, topic, we've recently had, I think, one of the biggest EU consultations uh, so far, consultation on copyright rules, when the Commission asked uh, something like 80 questions about different problems that we have with uh, copyright law, and some of them, uh, I think a dozen of questions related to issues closely, uh, <coughs> closely related to uh, science and research, <coughs> and basically the, the question is whether the current uh, framework of what the so-called exceptions and limitations to the copyright monopoly are sufficient for the uh, science and uh, research to, uh, to further develop, uh, especially when we take into consideration that science is not just reading uh, by humans, but it's also more and more uh, reuse of data by machines. And what you see here is a graph prepared by uh, myself and our uh, graphical designer at ICM, uh, Jakub Rakusa-Suszczewski, where we tried to present all legal or technical activities and their legal implications in the open air project. Uh, and you see all these are four different copyright uh, exclusive rights and two different database exclusive rights which are there which are implemented under the EU uh, directive in, in different member states 
Uh, and you can see that each of the very different technical activities that take place in the Open Air project trigger the applicability of at least one of these exclusive rights. Meaning, whenever you want to perform an activity on data or publications in such a way, you have to ask for permission. Because all these activities, some of them might be under some specific circumstances covered by the, these exceptions and uh, limitations, but not always, and there are always legal doubts whether they are really uh, covered. Uh, so to sum up, because I think I'm running out of time, uh, what I would personally like to see in the uh, EU framework is a clear mandate, not just encouragement of uh, liber uh, open access, uh, or this can be achieved also from the, the uh, other side, if we liberalize copyright, that it allows exercise of science in a um, uh, in a modern way, not just the way that we used to do it in 19th or 20th century. Uh, that is the <coughs> um, getting rid of this analogy of, of this idea of exceptions to monopoly. Rather, we think we should think about uh, scientific or research freedom, which is not an exception but a kind of a human right that should be uh, adequately uh, safeguarded. Uh, <coughs> and last, but maybe not least, and I, I didn't develop this idea that too much, but I'll just to highlight it, there is a very big uh, source of data uh, that could be used in research, but it's not used or it's not used uh, as much as it should be, namely the uh, data which, is, uh, which lies in public uh, archives, the data which is gathered by, uh, with public money, especially um, geodata, sp uh, spatial information, which can't be um, fully used for, especially for, the, uh, for various research projects, because despite some harmonization of public sector information rules in the EU, it's still not, uh, not that harmonized that would allow f full reuse of, uh, of this uh, information.